The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a virgin espoused to a man named Joseph, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. When Mary saw the angel, she was troubled at his saying. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy will. And the angel departed from her. The angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, good will to men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which they were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. I am Peter. I knew the man named Jesus of Nazareth, but I did not truly know him until his words had reached my heart. This happened on the Sea of Galilee. He said, Peter, launch out into the deep and let down the net for a catch. I thought he misunderstood, for I said, Master, we have toiled all night and have given nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. As the net hit the water, my mind came flooded with memories. I remember when my brother Andrew had told me he had found the Messiah. I remember when I, or I remember how I felt when he taught at the synagogue in Capernaum. I remember when he came to my home, when my mother-in-law was sick and he had raised her up. 
I remember earlier this morning when he had asked to use my ship. I took him little from land and he talked to those on the shore. All these memories filled my heart. And as my mind came back to my net, it too was at breaking point with abundancy of fish. I called to the shore for James and John. Both their ships were flooding with fish. It was at this point that I truly knew. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I fell to my knees and cried, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. But he did not. Instead, he stretched out a hand and said, From henceforth, thou shalt catch men. And from that day, I left my net, my ship, and I followed the Messiah. I am a sinner. I was caught in the act of a sin. The scribes and the Pharisees, they brought me unto Jesus. I was so ashamed and so afraid. I hid my tear-streaked face from him. I could not bear to see the disappointment in his eyes. But my captor shouted, Now Moses in the law commanded us that this woman should be stoned. But what sayest thou? They were tempting him, seeking for something to accuse him with. But the Lord stooped down, and with his finger rode on the ground, as if he heard them not. They continued to insist concerning my fate. And then Jesus, standing to meet their gaze, said, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast the stone at her. Only those words. And then he resumed writing on the ground. And slowly, one by one, they went out. And I watched them go until there were none left that accused me. Only then did I have the strength to look at the Son of God he was looking at me, and I was struck by the love in his eyes. As he said, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And I said, No man, Lord. And then he spoke unto me, Neither do I condemn thee. Go sin no more. I shall never forget the love he showed unto me that day. His love changed me. I believed in the name of Christ and glorified God from that hour on. He has love for all of God's children. I have felt of his love for so many. And as John the Apostle said, this is the disciple which testify of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are many other things which Jesus did, the which that if they should be written, every one, I suppose, not even the world itself, could contain the books which should be written. Amen. I am Peter. I'm one of Jesus' apostles. It was Passover. The Lord asked John and I to go find a place to hold our feast. We said, Lord, where should we go? He said, go into the city. There you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into his home. Ask him where the Lord should sup this night. We did as we were commanded. And we're shown this fine room. 
we made our preparations. The time was at hand. The Lord and the other apostles came and were seated at the table. But before he began his feast, he said, I wish to eat this feast with you this night, for it will be my last until all things of the New Testament have come to pass. Then we began to feast. Then the Lord stopped, took bread and broke it, and blessed it, and gave unto us and said, Eat, for this is a similitude of my body. Then he poured wine, blessed it, and gave unto us and said, Drink, drink it all, for this is a similitude of my blood, which I freely shed for you this night. The Lord arose, took a towel and put it around his waist, and came and began to wash our feet. When it was my turn, I protested. I said, Lord, thou shalt not wash my feet. He looked at me and said, What I do now, thou may not know, but it will be shown unto thee. I still protested. I said, Lord, I will not have thee wash my feet. He looked at me with sadness in his eyes and said, If thou dost not allow me to wash thy feet, I will have nothing to do with you. Then I said, Lord, wash my hands, wash my head, wash my feet. When he was finished, he came and sat against the table. And he asked us, he said, what have I just taught you? For is the master greater than the servant? Should ye not love one another? as I have loved you. Then we sang hymns, we prayed, and at the appointed time, the greatest man who has ever walked upon the face of this earth arose. He who was without sin, knowing full well what was to happen to him, and calmly and serenely led us from this room into the garden. When the Passover drew nigh, the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill Jesus, but they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas Iscariot. Judas went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. At the end, when the disciples were gathered together, they sung a hymn together, and then they went out into the Mount of Olives, and then cometh Jesus unto a place called Gethsemane. And he said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John, the sons of Zebedee, and being in an agony, he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Watch and pray with me. And then he went about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed to his father and said, Father, if it be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And an angel came down from heaven and strengthened him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And he rose up and came to his disciples and saw that they were sleeping. And he said unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation, for the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went again and prayed and said, O oh, my father, if this cup pass not away, except I drink it, thy will be done. Then he came again, and his desires were, disciples were very heavy with sleep. And then he went again a third time and prayed. And then he came to his disciples and said, Sleep on and take rest, for the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. And then he said, Arise, let us be going. 
for he is at hand that doth betray me. And as he said these words, Judas, and with him came a great host with swords and staves. For Judas gave them a sign, saying, For unto him unto whom I kiss, seize upon him. And then he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Jesus saith unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then they came and seized upon Jesus and took him. Go and see. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And Jesus answered him, To never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at the feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. They had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they did gather together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas? or Jesus, which is called Christ. For Pilate knew that for envy they had delivered him. When Pilate was set upon his judgment seat, his wife set him, saying, Hath thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have spent many days suffering because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask Barabbas, and destroy Jesus. And Pilate answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? And the people said, Barabbas. And Pilate said unto him, What then shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? And the people answered and said unto him, Let him be crucified. Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried the more, saying, Let him be crucified! Crucify him! Crucify him! When Pilate saw he could prevail nothing, but rather tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people, and said unto him, His blood be on us, and on our children. Be gone. quiet stillness hung over the holy city of Jerusalem on that early Sunday morning as we made our way to the garden. I, Mary Magdalene, along with other women, journeyed bearing sweet spices 
that we might anoint the body of Jesus. When we arrived at the garden, to our astonishment, the great stone, which was meant to seal the tomb, had been rolled away. A voice spoke earnestly, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. A man in a long white garment stood within the sepulcher. He spoke again, saying, Fear not ye, for I know ye seek Jesus, who was crucified. But he is not here. He is risen, as he said. Come, see where the Lord hath laid. Indeed, the body of Jesus was gone. With fear and trembling, we ran to the apostles. They have taken away thy Lord, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter and John hurried to the place of burial, the only remnant testifying that their Lord had been there was the neatly folded linen which remained. The tomb was undeniably empty. With saddened hearts and in wonder, the apostles returned to their homes. I alone remained weeping. As I wept, I knelt and I looked into the tomb. There sat two angels, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had laid. Seeing my grief, they asked, Woman, why weepest thou? Mournfully I replied, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Then. Through misty eyes, I noticed a man approach. He too asked, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Supposing him to be the gardener, I replied, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him from thee. Then, in a voice of pure love and sweet tenderness, he replied, Mary. My empty heart was filled to overflowing. Rabboni. There he stood, my master, Jesus Christ, his immortal body forever united with his eternal spirit. Touch me not, he spoke, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go and tell my brethren, that I do ascend to my Father, to your Father, to my God, and to your God. I was the first to witness his resurrection, but soon all will know, as I know, that he did ascend to his Father, and that the day is soon at hand when he will come to rule and reign as King of Kings. Jesus Christ is our Lord. He lives. He lives who once was dead. I know that my Redeemer